There's a chance you're watching this video on your phone. There's a chance it's an Android phone, but there would be no Android phones today if it wasn't for the Linux operating system. Linux has played a huge role in computing over the past 25 years. It grew from a small hobbyist OS to one of the most widely used operating systems in the world. But just like Android's existence depended on Linux, Linux's existence depended on something else, something with equally humble beginnings. It all started out with an operating system called Minix. In the late 1970s, Andrew Tannenbaum was teaching a course on operating systems in university in Amsterdam, using version 6 Unix, the sixth iteration of the Unix timesharing system from AT&T's Bell Labs. During this time, Australian author and computer scientist John Lyons had published a book titled Lyons Commentary on Unix, 6th edition, which described Unix version 6 in detail with source code examples. The book was popular in universities and was used by lecturers to give their students a better understanding of operating system design. AT&T who owned Unix were not happy with their operating system being described so openly. Upon the release of version 7 Unix, AT&T stipulated in their license that it could not be taught in universities. This meant that it was no longer possible to teach Unix in the detail that was needed to satisfy university courses. Dismayed by this and unsure what direction to take his OS design class, Tannenbaum decided to write his own Unix-like operating system that was compatible with version 7 Unix, so he could still teach it to his students. And with that, Minix was born, a Unix-like operating system utilizing a microkernel design. Minix quickly became popular amongst computer enthusiasts. It was easily accessible for those who wanted Unix in the comfort of their own home. It was quickly ported to a variety of platforms including the Commodore Amiga and Atari ST. Inspired by John Lyons' Unix book, Tannenbaum released his own book in 1987 titled Operating Systems, Design and Implementation, which fully documented the Minix operating system and included the full OS and floppy disk. Linus Torvalds, a young computer scientist from Finland, purchased Tannenbaum's book and installed Minix on his newly purchased computer while enrolled in the University of Helsinki. The book helped Torvalds get a better understanding of OS design and would play a huge role in Linus's future. Torvalds, who was an early user of Minix, frequently posted on the Minix newsgroups, commenting on his use of the operating system and hashing out some trivial issues. It wasn't long before Linus announced to the group that he intended to develop his own OS. That operating system would become known as Linux. The early days of Linux saw a huge debate between Tannenbaum and Torvalds in the Minix discussion group. The debate centered around operating system design and whether to use a monolithic kernel which Tannenbaum saw as outdated and complicating portability, and the microkernel design which Torvalds saw as impractical and limited in function. And while Minix would never go on to reach the widespread use of Linux, it certainly earned its place in computer history. Today, 30 years on from its initial release, a new marriage between the Minix kernel and NetBSD's user space has meant it's become a much more capable operating system than ever before.